Hey y'all, welcome to the Style Chronicles. I thought I would share with you guys the new Mac 137 and the new Mac 221 brushes and how I use them to apply makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, my daughter just woke up, so she's on my lap complaining. Um, but this is the 137 and this is the 221 and you can see they are very different from any of the brushes that Mac has in their, can you see? There, put them against something dark. Um, in their collection, the kind of long bristles and the wispiness of this brush for blushing or other powder applications oh. and then also this one for crease um, are just kind of new to the collection of matte brushes and very very nice so I thought I would share with you guys how I use these brushes because there's not a lot of information other than the descriptions on the Mac website um, there have not been a lot of reviews on them or how you know people use them in different ways, information on how people use them in different ways. So I thought I would share what I know about them and how I would use them. They are like a little multi-purpose, this one especially, because you can use it for so many different things, not just what I use it for. Um, and then this one, you know, definitely for crease work or just more detailed work. So they are special edition. There's my phone. They are uh, limited edition rather. So they, I think, are only available until they sell out, which is disappointing because they should be a little bit more permanent. Um, but this one is $42 and then the 221, which I just dropped, um, is $24 on the website. So that is that. Stay tuned and I will show you how I do my makeup with them um, and then give you a little bit more information on how I use them. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm going to start with an all over color and this is malt and I'm just going to get that onto my lid right here and I'm keeping it down low right in here just to kind of smooth out my lid area same thing on the other side okay then I'm going to take the Mac 221 and Samoa Silk and I'm going to get that onto this brush and I'm just going to go right into my crease right in here and start really carving it out and this brush does all the work you just literally windshield wiper motion back and forth you don't really have to think about it from the inner corner all the way to the outer corner A little bit more for the other side, inner corner to outer corner. And then for a little bit of depth, I'm going to take saddle, which is just a little slight darker brown. I'm going to get that onto the brush and then I'm going to go into my crease with that color. Then you'll see the definition that it creates. Then I always connect the outer corner to the crease. I just think it looks more cohesive. So bringing this back on this side, creating my crease the same way, inner corner, cross to that outer corner, and then connecting that. And this brush, literally, you just put it in and move it back and forth, and it does everything for you, if you will. Okay, and then if you want to, you can use the tip and pull it up to blend that top portion a little bit. Same thing on this side, so you're pulling it up a little bit and out just to blend. That's the 221. You can see if I wanted a very defined cut crease how well I could lay down that line with just one brush. Um, it lays it very very nicely. So now I'm going to go in with my MAC 224 just to blend. And I'm going to start here at the outer corner and I'm just going to blend this in to the inner corner. 
and I'm only blending that top section. I don't go onto my lower lid at all. Same thing on the other side. And you can see how much bigger and larger my eyes already look just by creating a crease. Okay, and then for the darker outer corners, just to finish my overall look, I'm going to take Swiss chocolate, which is a little bit darker um, than saddle. You can see them together. Swiss chocolate. And for this one, I'm going to put it on my Chanel number 20 contour shadow um, blender. You can see the taper tapered effect of the bristles. This is Max 224 next to it. And it's just great for blending, but this one for the taper is what I use for my outer corner. So that Swiss chocolate, and then I'm just gonna go in and stamp it on that outer corner and bring it in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, stamp and bring it down and in. And then I'm going to take that color and just run it slightly into my crease on that outer corner, just that outer V section, if you will. Oh, that got blurry, sorry. Same thing on this side. Just like that. And then with this brush, I can just blend in that outer area. Just beat my eyes a little bit with it. Okay. And then just for blending purposes, I go back in with the 224 just to make sure that it is nicely blended together. Okay. And those are my eyes. Now for my face, I'm going to take the Smashbox icon or Smashbox contour palette and my NARS Eda brush. And I'm going to contour my face a little bit. I will zoom out for the purposes of face contour. And I'm just going to go into my cheekbones, my lower cheekbones, and blend that. And then I turn the brush sideways a little bit to get a little bit um, of a blended effect with it. Same thing on the other side. And I turn it sideways to blend it up. Um, I like the line here to stay pretty sharp, so I just blend the top. And then a little bit on my forehead, each one. And around my face. And I just do whatever is left on the brush around my actual hairline. Okay. Okay, and then my nose a little bit. I just like to go in right here. And I connect the inner corner, and then I go down the side just to make it, I don't know, I like it sharper looking. Um, not so bulbous right here on the end. But the definition just kind of wakes your face up a little bit. I don't know, I, I like the way it looks when I'm a little bit more defined, or my nose is a little bit more defined.
Okay, we're going to end right here. Okay, and then with some highlighter, that Smashbox highlighter right here, I'm going to go in with just a Morphe brush and highlight down the center of my nose, my forehead, and the high points of my cheekbones. And this is before I do any blush, and then I will re-highlight after I do blush. Um, more of setting, I guess. And then also to make this area very sharp, I do that. Okay, so for blush, I love this brush. Um, and I'll show you next to the 139, the 137. And you can see how much larger, fluffier, and longer the bristles are. This is a lot more tightly packed, very compact, and then it's a contoured angled brush. And this one is kind of lightly tapered, but the tapered effect of it just adds to the blending since it's so fluffy and just long. Um, so this, I love this. This is my everyday blush brush. You can't go wrong with this one unless you're using a very pigmented blush. It picks up a lot, so it deposits a lot. So this is really good with my lighter colored blushes. And for my darker colored blushes or brighter blushes, I was using just this tip and then being very, very careful about how I place it on my face and blend it. Because once you deposit that color on your face, it's really not going to budge from the point where you first set it because it's just so bright the pigment just adheres to your skin fast and blending it becomes a problem so that's what I've been doing for pigmented blushes this one however does it seamlessly I mean it's just you really can't go wrong with it and so here are my blushes or some of my uh, MAC blushes they're not all I have other ones that I haven't put into a palette yet but for light ones like these I think that 139 is great. I've never had a problem with it. But for darker ones, brighter ones, like these over here, this is Azalea by MAC or Apple Red, Frenzy, Dolly Mix even. Um, my brush, I would use the tip, like I said. So today I'm going to do, I think, um, no, Apple Red. That's what I was using, Apple Red, which is really pretty color, but you can see just how pigmented it is. It's very, very pigmented blush. So for this, I'm just going to literally tap it get it onto the blush brush and go in from there and you'll see the color get deposited and then how I blend it out. So I go into wherever I place my brush which would be um, in essential the apples of my cheek and then kind of out. My face is very oval so this is the thinnest point of my face, the thickest point would be right in here and that's where I place my blush and I literally you just wave it on um, like that and just by doing this you'll start to see do you see the blush that I placed already it's crazy the color just goes on so easily and I'm not even like you know with this one I would put it on and then blend like brush it on with the bristles this I'm just lightly kind of sweeping over my face not even tapping or um, buffing or anything I'm just sweeping it and you can see the blush placement okay and that's just to get it on and then to blend it in of course you would go in with a blend like motion like this and just build that color up build it up okay and I like it around my temples lightly I mean I'm not saying I put blush like it's my cheek around my temples can you see the way the color went on? It's just really, really pretty. You know, the color needs to adjust. Okay. So that is the 137. Now for this 137, when I purchased it, the lady said, oh, are you going to use that to contour with? And I said, no, is that what people are using it for? I said, I was going to use it for a blush brush, um, for very pigmented blushes. And she said a lot of people were buying it to use it for contour because it fits into the hollow of your cheek, which is a great idea. Um, I couldn't contour my nose with it, but I probably could do my cheekbones. She said the other thing they're using it for was setting powder all over your face and then also for highlight, um, to apply highlight to your cheekbones, which would be really pretty too because it is so 
foolproof um, as far as highlight is concerned because it's not as densely packed as like the brush that I typically use. Um, so it works really, really well for that also. And the other thing, which I thought was hilarious when she told me, but she said that uh, people were using it for crease work to blend their crease. And I thought, wow, I mean, you can see this brush is literally the size of my eyelid. Um, I really couldn't blend a crease with this, but I could see how some people might like it for that all natural kind of blended crease look. Um, which would be pretty, but for me, I just like the way it applies blush. And I'm gonna use it now to apply that highlight, that lightest color in here, right here to the apples, or to the tops of the apples of the cheeks, and then just blend down a little bit um, for a little bit more of a highlighted effect, and to make sure that that highlighter is blended into the blush right here at the top. I just like the effect that it gives. It gives a slight kind of pearlescence to the blush, um, not too much but just enough. Okay, so that is what I use my 137 for, and I think it's great to deposit color if you just kind of blush it, blush it, brush it onto your skin in this manner before you go in and kind of do the blush thing that everybody likes to do where they're beating their face with a brush. Um, I'm sitting on my leg and that hurt. Okay, so that is my face. I'm going to just dust away any excess and then put some mascara on and I am done um, with this I wanted to blend a little bit more hey y'all welcome to the style chronicles I thought I would share with you guys the new Mac 137 and the new Mac 221 brushes and how I use them to apply makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, my daughter just woke up, so she's on my lap complaining. Um, but this is the 137 and this is the 221, and you can see they are very different from any of the brushes that MAC has in their, can you see, there, put them against something dark, um, in their collection, the kind of long bristles and the wispiness of this brush for blushing or other powder applications and then also this one for crease um, are just kind of new to the collection of matte brushes and very very nice so I thought I would share with you guys how I use these brushes because there's not a lot of information other than the descriptions on the MAC website um, there have not been a lot of reviews on them or how you know people use them in different ways information on how people use them in different ways so I thought I would share what I know about them and how I would use them they are like a little multi-purpose, this one especially, because you can use it for so many different things, not just what I use it for. Um, and then this one, you know, definitely for crease work or just more detailed work. So stay tuned. I will show you how I use them and um, hopefully, yeah, you can incorporate them into your routine too. They are special edition. There's my phone. They're uh, limited edition rather. So they, I think, are only available until they sell out, which is disappointing because they should be a little bit more permanent. Um, but this one is $42 and then the 221, which I just dropped, um, is $24 on the website. So that is that. Stay tuned and I will show you how I do my makeup with them um, and then give you a little bit more information on how I use them. Thanks for watching.